Hello again. Following on from the conviction yesterday of Alex Belfield for stalking, I was wondering whether the implications for free speech as relate to this case are as serious as some suppose. Almost every time somebody talks today of a supposed threat to free speech, they're not really talking about restrictions imposed upon a man or woman in this country from saying anything at all. What they are really talking about is whether large companies or organisations will help him or her publicise the views being expressed. These are two very different things. Those of you who watch Alex Belfield will know that he often claims that there is no free speech anymore and that he is determined to fight for free speech. This is, of course, nonsense. If he were to go to his friend's house or sit in a bar saying the kinds of things which he said on Twitter or his Voice of Reason internet group, nobody would care in the least. He is absolutely free to say anything he wants. Whether or not YouTube aids him by spreading his views to hundreds of thousands of people on the internet is a completely different question. At one time they did allow him to do this, and then for a while they stopped him. Now they say that he can indeed say those things, but they will not pay him for doing so by putting advertisements on his channel and giving him a share of the proceeds. I'm sure that viewers will appreciate the distinction here. I have been suspended a number of times from YouTube, of course, and I'm always in danger of this happening again. It happened very briefly last week, in fact. To give an example, they once suspended me for a week for questioning the efficacy of face masks as a means of preventing the spread of a virus infection. Of course, that was not suppressing free speech at all. I was perfectly free to express those views anywhere I pleased, and nobody cared in the least about it. I could say it anywhere in the street, anywhere in public. That's fine. What it meant, though, was that YouTube declined to be a vehicle for my views. That might be annoying, but it isn't really anything at all to do with free speech. A commercial company refusing to allow me to use their services for propagating my views and opinions is not an infringement of my right to speak freely. In the old days, uh, you know, I'm talking now about 40 or 50 years ago, I might perhaps have written a book expressing hatred of Jews, say, and then found that a firm of printers refused to print it for me. That wouldn't have anything to do with preventing free speech, would it? I cannot reasonably expect that any commercial company or large organisation will actively help me publish my views to the world. There is a reason for this, of course. I sometimes remark to my wife, uh, some politician, or even an entire group or class of person, they ought to be shot. I can express that view while travelling on public transport, sitting in the pub, walking in the street. I've got complete freedom of speech in that regard. I have the freedom of speech to say such things. If, however, I start advocating the mass execution of some group in a video on YouTube or in a tweet, I might find that I get suspended. In a way, that makes sense. A private opinion expressed in the street is one thing. Talking about it to millions of people across the world is something else again. Suppose that one of those millions of people takes me at my word and goes out and shoots somebody. The other day we looked at the case of the man in Hampshire who was arrested by the police for saying unflattering things about transsexuals. Now, I think that was scandalous, and I said so at the time. But we must concede that there is a difference between saying stuff about transsexuals in ordinary life and broadcasting those same views to millions of people via Twitter. 
nearly every case that we see these days where somebody is claiming that there is no such thing anymore as free speech turns out to be an instant of somebody who is actually complaining that he or she cannot communicate his or her views to millions of people throughout the world rather than somebody who is prevented merely from speaking freely. I'm bound to say that in the last 20 years I have been able to speak freely about any subject at all and to say what I please whether in public, among friends or in my own home. What I am not always able to do is find a commercial company which will provide me with a free platform to disseminate the same views electronically. I think that I have every bit as much free speech as I enjoyed in the 1970s. I can say today anything which I might have said in those days and in the same circumstances.